with you today, I'll give you just three examples of how the public is being misled by experts, politicians, doctors, and so on. And certainly the public misleads themselves too, because having no, yeah, no basic training, not knowing what questions to ask. And I just focus on three things, uh, and they'll have all to do with health statistics. One is five-year survival rates. So let's start our uh, journey in the US. When Rudy Giuliani was still running for president, he said the following in an interview. I had prostate cancer five, six years ago. My chances of surviving prostate cancer, and thank God I was cured of it in the United States, 82%. That's good, isn't it? My chances of surviving prostate cancer in England, only 44% <laughs> under socialized medicine. And for those among you who are British and don't know, this is a bad word. <laughs> Because it's the state who wastes money. <laughs> Unlike the American system. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, conclusion, you better live in New York than in York. <laughs> Any disagreement? No. no We're amazing. taking it. Don't notice it. That's the point. What's the base rate? So, uh, what he's saying is technically a five year survival rate. Mm -hmm. It suggests something about living longer, but that is not the case. Men in the US and men in England die about as frequently from prostate cancer and as early. And I'll show you now why. There are two reasons. One is called the lead time bias. So here you have a group of people without screening that are the English. They are not pushed by everyone into screening. If you would be an American, then you know it's your doctor or it's your wife. One of the two. <laughs> there are exceptions. So these are the British. That's the American. And we have each of these groups has cancer, prostate cancer, and they all die at age 70, to make it simple. The British live a nice life yeah, until something goes wrong here, and three years later, they die. Five years of survival rate, zero. <coughs> Got it? The Americans go screening, go screening, and then it's early detected, and ten years later, they die. Five years of survival rate, 100%. Changes in survival rates and mortality rates are correlated, guess how high? 0.0. There's no connection. There's a second reason for that, and that's called overdiagnosis, an important concept, not well known. So, again, a group that uh, <coughs> does not go screening, and there are thousands of them have progressive prostate cancer. Five years later, there's roughly the statistics on which Guliani was working on. About 44% are still alive. That's the five-year survival rate. And with screening, now we have the same thousand, but cancers are detected in others who do not have a cancer that they would ever notice. That's called non-progressive cancer. So this is the cancer with whom we all die, not from, but just we die with the cancer. And just to get a figure of some 2,000 people with non-progressive now they are put in into this equation of the five-year survival rate. Now we have not 440, but 2,400. And then we get roughly the number that uh, Giuliani had. Got it? So, the first trick. Now, the point is, we'll get to the patient. Huh? It's not just something wrong in patient's mind, what's going on here. And what you see here is an ad by one of the most prestigious uh, cancer centers in the U.S., in the Anderson. And you don't have to read all of this, but just look at the graph. What I show you, over the years, 1960 to 1990, yeah, their five-year survival rates of prostate cancer, isn't this a dramatic increase? It's impressive. And I compare that 
with the nationwide values, but not with five years survival rates, because they would also gone up for the same reason, but with the mortality rates, which basically don't change, <coughs> because we have no evidence that all this PSA screening helps, right? I mean, saves lives. Right? So here's another example how the public is being misled. And if you read the text, then you get the rest of this link. Right? So the, these rates are uh, <coughs> for the two reasons I showed you, and they are not correlated with mortality rates. Let's go on. Now we study physicians, get to, get to the doctors. Do physicians understand what five-year survival rates are? What would you expect? Have you ever asked for those men among you, you urologists, what the five-year survival rates that he cites is 82%? Or if in England, that's only 41, yeah? What that means? Ask them. So we have uh, tested 65 German physicians, and they got either the five-year survival rates, so changes over time or between groups, and all the mortality rates. It's all, all the same, based on the same data. And what you see here, if they go to survival rates, this was the story that Rudy Giuliani presented to the public, 97% and, and of the physicians thought the screening is effective. If they got the mortality rates, it was only 5%. We can throw the doctors in any corner, not everyone, but most of them. <coughs> Just how you present them. These poor doctors still have no training. I don't know how it is in, in Yale Medical School, but I will get with you, we'll do a study, and they may not much be better. Although they get the best training, allegedly. But one of the points is that medicine bets on technology, <coughs> bureaucracy, money, but not yeah, on understanding this technology. And that's just one example. <coughs> uh, we asked also uh, whether they know what the lead time bias is, which I just showed you. Two out of 65 knew. And whether they had ever heard of overdiagnosis in this <coughs> country, none. Okay. That's an estimate of the cost in the US, what this business costs, and men go, and are misled and get treatments, and then think that their life is safe. Let's go on. Here is a transparent way to summarize the results of last year's two randomized trials of prostate cancer. Now what we do at the Harding Center for Risk Literacy, named after David Harding, who uh, gave us the, the money to do this in <coughs> Berlin, so to bring London money to Berlin to enlighten the Germans. <laughs> and David Spiegelhardt there is also a kind of, uh, we are kind of siblings because David Harding finances both of us, not entirely, but probably not. And so uh, this is an example for a so called fact box. Uh, and uh, Steve Wallachin and Lisa Schwartz work much on these boxes. And here's the way to help the public to understand the evidence. So, you have two options. Don't go screening, go screening. Put them next to next so that everyone sees what's the comparison. And there are two questions. What's the benefit and how much? What's the harm and how much? And then you can see. And there are, and benefit, there are two questions. One is total cancer mortality. Will I die from cancer within nine years? <coughs> And the other question is, will I die from prostate cancer? These are two different questions. Because, uh, for instance, many uh, poor people who die of cancer have multiple cancers. It's hard to uh, identify one. So. so that's the data. Cancer mortality, those guys don't go 1,000, and 23.8 uh, of each 1,000 uh, die from cancer. Those who go, it's the same. Certainly not less. On prostate cancer mortality, there are two studies. That's the European one. Finds a, a reduction from uh, 3.7 to 3, and the American one finds nothing. No difference. That's about the evidence that we have. By the way, how would you uh, present this information to the public if you want to mislead the public? <coughs> you wouldn't say, 
uh, 0.7 out of 1,000. That's not impressive. So the, uh, we, we know many uh, press releases who say a 20% risk reduction. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> okay. Harms. Hmm? These are the basic harms. You don't get any harms you know, if you're not going. And uh, it's not a good test. So about 50 to 200 out of every 1,000 will have false biopsies and unnecessary biopsies and uh, unnecessary treatment. Uh, that's about 10 to 30 who hits them. So the, these are men who do have prostate cancer, but are non-progressive ones, yeah, as most of those are, yeah, and they are operated and think their life has been saved, and really they only have been hurt. <coughs> so that's a way to present to everyone so that every man can make his own decision. That's the point, yeah, to educate the public so they can make decisions rather than to, to nudge them or press them into something. Uh, that's the difference between my opinion and many of my American colleagues uh, who think, if I may say, uh, that the public is hopeless anyhow uh, and when it comes to risks. Uh, and then you basically have the usual policy, gather the experts, close the doors, uh, and find a way how to bring them, nudge them there where they should be. Uh. That's not my policy. I believe that we can educate the public. There will always be a few hopeless fire, but most of them, if you only would start, and I give you some examples. Uh, <clears throat> so, what do you think that now we get to the public, what they believe the benefit of prostate cancer screening is? Uh, we've done the first European wide study with nine countries. Here are just three as an example. Uh, the question was about what you have seen out of 1,000 men, and you know. <laughs> One study says zero, the other one says 0.7. So let's assume that these two uh, answers are correct. Hmm? One of these two is, yeah. And we uh, got the others like an uh, order of magnitude, two orders of magnitude away. You see German. These are German men, uh, right and sample. And uh, not many have an idea what's going on. Most overestimate the benefit by an order of magnitude, two orders of magnitude. Let's look at British. Do you think the British are better informed? Anyone who thinks? Nobody? <laughs> Let's see. You're right. <laughs> you see, the British here, uh, that's more than 50% less. <laughs> look at that here. So these are probably those people who mistake the 20% risk reduction as eh, 200,000. Eh? They're being misled. <coughs> OK, I'll show you Spain. What do you think about Spain? OK, they're much better. The reason is not that they're better informed, but they're less informed. <laughs> <laughs> Which country among all the EU, EU countries, and uh, we also had the, the part of Russia, so all the big countries you think is best informed in general about uh, matters of, you also ask for, uh, for uh, mammography, do you have any guess? No, not the British. No, not the Holland, that would also what I would have at the beginning, but then I realized of course it has to be something totally different, the Russians. Again, because they are not well informed. So they're not missing. 